Listen, I, you know what? It's, it's, I've got to talk about Chelsea right now. I'm going yeah. to come straight to you. 444 million quid as of today. Todd Bowley's going crazy. Taking January sales to a whole different level. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know them, them bargains are out there in January. <laughs> are, they, are they bargains? Though? <laughs> are they bargains? <laughs> well, time would tell. Do you know what? I've, I've, I, was, um, I was thinking about this week. And there, there must be some kind of thought behind it, some plan, behind, some financial thing, clever thing, because Chelsea have, have always pioneered so with a loan system, right, mm. of 10, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Frank Harnison was there, right, and he started stockpiling players, buying players, and everyone thought Chelsea were crazy, spending all these money on young players who wasn't really making the first team, but then they were selling. They were sending them out on loan, selling them and making the asset more. So I think Chelsea, these guys, they're, they're, they're financial guys, they're... Economic guys, then they'll there'll be a plan behind this. This isn't scattergun. It looks like it is, but you need time. Like have a look in three, four, five years, and see where Chelsea are. They needed a refresh, that's for sure. But I'm sure there'll be some kind of plan. But it's different. It's just different. Spending this type of money in January is different. So that's why everyone's going, "Wow, what what are Chelsea doing?" But I'm sure there will be a plan. We we spoke about bargains. We're going to find out if they're bargains. Let's see what 444 million quid gets you today. We're going to have a little look at uh, the players that they've bought in because it's 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 interesting. I mean, you look there and it's there's some huge mm. numbers. I mean, yeah. obviously the, the the Mudrick one was was interesting. Mm. They bought in a Bamiyang. Bamiyang hasn't yeah. hasn't quite done it yet. You know, a lot of these players are. are Almost mm. unknown quantities for a lot of people. Yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's hard to talk about on a Saturday morning. See, see all of them players there, right? They all have a number. You know, they're, they're all, they've all that. What is that number spread out over four years, five years? You know, because you have to you have to play within financial fair play. So you can only so say for instance, Mudrik, like he was the most sought after young player. So Chelsea would probably have had to play pay a premium for him. So they maybe played over the odds, but they might have stretched it over five years, which allows them to get it. And they're all assets. They will like as pl as players as we know, where we play well, our asset goes up, our value goes up. When we, when we get injured or we don't play well, the asset goes down. So it's up to now, Grand Potter, to to put in a system now where you could where Woodrick can thrive. That all of a sudden, in two years' time, eighty nine million looks like a bargain. That's what yeah. you've got to do. And if 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 the other players are not performing, then you sell them, maybe cut your losses. I, I, it's too early to talk ec talk economics, <laughs> yeah, but right. I'm sure there's a plan. These people are too smart for there not to be a plan. Let me ask a question. With all them players, though, yeah. they're coming in, how do you create the culture of Chelsea yeah. <clears throat> with all them mm. new players? Yeah, well, that's that's the problem, right? Because, you know, Chelsea of the last 20... Chelsea's not new money anymore. Chelsea's nah. been the most successful team of the last 20 years in terms of winning trophies. But that's factual. They've won the Champions League twice, the league multiple times, FA Cup League, so... When I, I was talking to Koulibaly the other day, he was a big Chelsea fan, and it made me feel old because he, he was saying, I used to watch you and John Terry and Frank Lampard growing up, and I really wanted to play for Chelsea. There was nobody in Senegal wanting to play for Chelsea 40 years ago because yeah, you know what yeah. it was. So the club's changed. So there is a culture to be had, and it needs to be kept on going. You know, so it's important. You know, we've lost Petr Cech. Um, I, I think Claude Makélélé is still at the club, but... You still need people. You still need. The, I think you still need players around the club who to drive them standards. Let the players know coming into the dressing room what it's all about. And I feel the young players, like your Mason Mounts, like your Reese James, the ones that have been born and bred in the club, yeah. they know it. So they're so important to that club to drive the culture because it, it is a must-win. It's a must-win club now. Chelsea fans, I watched them the other night at Fulham, and they were passionate getting behind the team, but they're frustrated because they're so, not. Yeah. They're not fighting with Man City. With, with, with Arsenal at the moment. So it has to happen. It has to happen quick for Chelsea. We need to get back up there. But I want to talk to you about this. You know, we, we talk about that there must be method to the madness and, and it looks like madness. Todd Bowley's in a Twitter space with Chelsea fans and, and they're talking about who do you want to see sign next? Hmm. Is that, does that not, does yeah, that not scare you a little don't bit? Don't worry you because it seems like, you know sometimes when you've got a lot of options yeah, so yeah. Bowley's got a lot of money. Yeah. So when you've got a lot of money it seems like you just yeah. go out and that person's yeah. available let me go yeah. get that rather yeah. than developing, nurturing yeah. players with what you've got. When you've got a man that's got that much money, just yeah, like you can do it. You, want. you just do it because you can. If he wants to get yeah. me out of retirement, I just, I'm, I'm just that cool out. I, I ain't no. There's, there's, there's a price. There's a price. There's a price. No, yeah, it's a real big. Now play it, but that's what it seems like when. Yeah. So as a Chelsea fan or for Chelsea supporters, yeah. do you be like, "Raw oh, man, that's our yeah. chairman," just out here saying, "Bringing anybody." Yeah. Do you, know, do you know what I? I think these guys. They, they're. I've met them, and it's not just one. It's not just Todd Bowley. He's the front man, but there's lots of people. There's lots of. There's a team behind him. There's a whole financial team behind him. And then you talk about him going on Twitter and speaking to the fans. One thing that's been coming out of Chelsea 
the noise is, is collaboration. They they want to open up. They want to be modern. They want to know what the fans think. You know, and that's that. You've got to you got to admire that to a certain degree. For for, for for old school guys like myself, you have to embrace that. You know, the fans want yeah. engagement. You know, the fans want to feel like they can actually have access to the owner. Like they might throw a name in of a kid. Is this such because like, too much access? I don't know. You, uh, look, I, listen, I, I think Joel touches on it in the sense where football is trying to evolve with mm. society. Mm. Um, but let me just say, less with the old, we're the same age, yeah? yeah, yeah? yeah. Uh, <laughs> you find out a few times, you know, my brother. Um, but no, I, I listen, I, I guess, you know, we are going through a transitional period all around. So, m modern views. Again, I just think a chairman just said, who do you want? He's like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? He looks but that right. means, Arsenal, uh, Arsenal yeah. him for him. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll grab that. Now, yeah. last thing I want to say to you is... is with Chelsea and with Potter, what is a successful season? How do you, first of all, how do you, how do you bring all of those mm. players in, and what, what do you deem a successful season? Four hundred and forty-four mil, and you don't get top four. That's, that's... well, uh, uh, in usual circumstances, what we was for, what we thought as players at Chelsea was we have to put silverware on the table at some point. You know, obviously you want the big ones, but if you can only win the FA Cup, the league only win this. It's still an achievement. Yeah, it's yeah. tough to win trophies. Yeah. That would usually be the. Um, the, the benchmark but because of all the uncertainty because of the change of owners I think Chelsea have to get into the Champions League this season and it's a tall ask it's, a, it's, yeah. it's really we fought, I think that's success but also if you can't achieve that there needs to be signs that the team's settling by the end of the season and I think that'll be enough for ground. I don't think people talking about changing managers I don't even think that's on the I don't even think the, the owners are, are even thinking of that I really do I think Potter's in there for a long term a different plan and to get these players that they're bringing in and nurture them and, and build some kind of system where Chelsea can, can compete again. Because at the moment, we're a long way away from Man City and Arsenal to that degree. Yeah. No, they can't forget Arsenal, listen. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're doing their thing. Fair yeah. enough. 